and welcome back to Otaku No Video as always. Thank you very much for joining me. Where in this video, I'll be reviewing Gasaraki, the spoiler-free review. Now, this is an anime made in the um, 1990s by an absolute dream team of mecha creators. I'm going to put them all here on the sidebar so you can read it. Um, and they basically asked themselves, what would a realistic mecha series look like? More accurately, um, if mecha could actually be manufactured in something approximating the modern day, how would that actually play out given the modern world and its politics and so forth? So Gasaraki is a modern political thriller that uses realistic mecha. The premise is based on the first Gulf War and it positions mecha as ideal urban combat machines that are great at those sort of tight spaces and very difficult to maneuver areas where tanks just are kind of awkward, jeeps aren't powerful enough or armored enough, and individuals uh, aren't nearly armored enough. And so the idea is that mecha can kind of climb around and get around in these urban environments very, very well. Now, most anime made at this point had very low animation budgets, but thanks partly to the cast behind it, um, they just pour a lot of, uh, of budget into the action animation in particular, but also the animation in general. Now, there are a lot of dialogue scenes where there's almost no movement whatsoever, um, but this certainly has a higher budget than most shows at the time, and as I said, the action really looks lovely. One other nice thing is that um, the action animation is not limited to a few shots during those action sequences. You get a lot of movement during those scenes. Moreover, there's a lot of attention paid to visual imagery. Characters are framed in interesting ways or colored in a way that uh, sticks in your mind. In fact, a lot of the, the shots and the framing in Gasaraki really stuck in my mind. Unfortunately, the character animation is quite stiff and simplistic. The, there are a lot of dialogue scenes where there's almost no movement whatsoever. And when characters do move, they don't move much. Now that said, this does feel like a choice. Gasaraki alternates between these very chaotic action scenes and very orderly conversation in which things are being explained in dialogue, but it's not necessarily what the characters are actually saying, it's what they're not saying or what they're referencing. In other words, it feels impersonal a lot of the times, and it also feels like that very impersonal nature is very intentional. Now, much of this is due to the cast of characters. Gasaraki follows a lot of characters. While it's not as big as, say, some super robot shows, it is a large cast and they have very different personalities. Moreover, those characters fit a large variety of roles. So it's not just you know, pilots and engineers and such. It is uh, family members and tech support people and politicians and all sorts of people who are all very much involved in the story. Now, this impersonal nature is intensified by the protagonist, who is a very quiet and isolated character. Moreover, it, that's, again, intentional. Imagine an, an entire mecha series that focuses on Rei Ayanami as the protagonist, and you get a feel for how this can be a difficult show to engage with. Now, another interesting point about Gasaraki is its dialogue. There are very few memorable lines, but that's because the dialogue scenes are intentionally banal. The characters are not trying to reveal a lot through their conversations, and that in itself reveals a lot about what they're hiding or what they're not hiding. It's quite interesting once you start really getting into um, motivation for characters. Moreover, that's realistic. A lot of the characters don't want to reveal things about themselves. It's more realistic. And then there's the reality of the world of Gasaraki. This feels like it could be happening in our real world. The mecha aren't painted in superhero colors of blue and red. They're battleship gray and camouflage green. The mechanics go through years of trial runs and testing in simulated environments and things that just require a lot of time because they have to go through Lots of phases of testing. Now, this might be a turnoff for some. I mean, Gasaraki is set in a world of Saddam Hussein and CNN. This is not the typical let's rush into battle 
uh, sort of story that you'll get in, again, like a Super Robot show or even a Gundam or Macross show. Moreover, Gasaraki can be just plain weird. The first episode alternates between uh, a combat sequence and a kabuki play. Moreover, Gasaraki can be just plain weird. The first episode alternates between battlefield combat and a kabuki play. And that's not purely stylistic. Those two are related in plot. Some whole episodes are purely conversation. It's an odd duck, but I remember it. It's imagery in particular. There's a lot of things that happen, a lot of moments that pop at you from the story. Um, again, it's kind of that banal element of the story that chugs along and chugs along. Then suddenly that comes together in something that is shocking and memorable. Now, again, I kind of really can't describe Gasaraki without getting into spoilers. I'd love to do a digging deeper on this one. Although, gosh, there's a lot to talk about, and because it's so weird, it's kind of like Evangelion, where you can go in a lot of ways if you really want to. Um, so it is an unusual show, but if you're interested in this idea of you know, a realistic mecha uh, story set in really the real world, the way mecha probably would be treated in the real world, with some dashes of not quite fantasy, but some um, um, eh, some things to explain how you could actually get a mecha in the real world. Um, Gasaraki is certainly fascinating. So that's my thoughts, and that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.